This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah We have a question to begin with, which is one of those classical Ramadan questions that is taraweeh 8 rak'ahs or 20 rak'ahs? So that's the first question of Ramadan and it's a good question, right? The the basic principle to keep in mind, right? And the ulama say that matters are understood by their principles, right? That if you understand the principles of something, you'll have clarity about the thing. Because what is a, they say, the al-asl may yubtana alayhi ghayruhu. A basic a foundational principle is what other things are based upon. So when we have questions about religion, that what is the ruling of such and such? Then we have to understand some basic principles. The first is that we know that both the Quran and the Sunnah of our beloved Messenger Sallallahu are preserved. And the Quran is preserved not just in its wording, the words of the Quran, but its understanding is preserved. Why? Because Allah Subhanahu wa says, "Inna nahnu nazalna dhikr." Truly, we have sent down the remembrance. It is, and it is we who shall preserve it. And the remembrance, the ulama say, is what you take heed from, which is words and their meanings. So the meanings of the Quran are preserved by divine promise. Likewise with the sunnah. And the understanding of the deen of Islam, it's a divine promise that will be preserved until the last day. Our beloved Messenger وسلم, said, لا يزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق. They will always remain a group in my community, manifest on the truth, unaffected by those who would oppose or deride them until the command of Allah comes and they're as yet on that. وهم على ذلك. And that hadith is related by Bukhari and Muslim. It's in the Motta of Malik and in all the major collections of Sunan. Imam al-Bukhari in his chapter heading says, who is this group that is manifest on the truth? Zuhur. They're not just, there's some people who are on the truth. No, a group in my community is manifest on the truth. So they're clearly discernible. He says in his chapter heading in Sahih al-Bukhari, al ulama," And they're the people of knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ ذِكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of remembrance if you know not. So, the people of remembrance, Ahlu Dhikr, when it comes to matters of human actions, the things that we do in our religion or in our practice, the people of remembrance whom we've commanded to return to are the Imams of Islam, are the Imams of Islam. And it is through them and their understanding that religion is preserved. And this in mainstream Sunni Islam is represented by the four schools of mainstream Islam. And according to all four schools of mainstream Sunni Islam, the Sunnah of Taraweeh is 20 rak'ahs. It's 20 rak'ahs. Eight rak'ahs refers in the hadiths to the practice of the Prophet ﷺ when it comes to night worship. In the books of Sunan, most of the books that mention those hadiths that the Prophet ﷺ used to always pray eight rak'ahs at night. Or 11 rak'ahs, which is witr plus uh, you know, tarawi, uh, his tahajjud plus witr, they refer to his qiyamul layl or his tahajjud, his night worship or his night devotion. And Sayyidina Aisha relates about that that the Prophet did not used to leave you know, eight rak'ahs of tahajjud and then witr in Ramadan or outside Ramadan. But there's no taraweeh after Ramadan. That's referring to his night worship, uh, his tahajjud. And, and one of the important proofs of that is when Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab when he was Amir al-Mu'mineen, when he gathered people behind one imam, 
praying 20 rak'ahs. None of the companions differed with him. None of them differed with him. Why? Because were that not the sunnah, they would have openly objected. Right? Or they would have at least had a discussion on it. And they didn't. And that's been the inherited practice of the Prophet ﷺ across. At the same time, we have to keep three things in mind. The first is that this is a sunnah, not a fard. It's an emphasized sunnah. So if someone doesn't do it at all, you know, we do not argue with them. We do not argue with them, right? One of our teachers at Seeker's Guidance, Sheikh Hamza Karam Ali, he said, difference of opinion are dealt with not by coming to agreement, but by good character, by good character, by prophetic akhlaq. That's the first thing. To keep in mind, it's a sunnah mu'akkada. So we take it seriously, but we don't argue about it. We don't argue about it. Secondly, to keep in mind the great virtue of, of tarawih and to strive to do it. In, especially in the north, more northerly countries, tarawih is quite late. So it can be challenging for people to do it, but there's great reward and sacrifice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran in Surah Ankabut, those who strive for our sake, we will surely guide to the ways leading to us. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And truly Allah is with those of excellence. One of the characteristics of the muhsineen, of the people of excellence, is that they strive and sacrifice for the sake of Allah. So you sacrifice a little bit of your sleep, a little bit of your rest. For the sake of Allah, there's tremendous reward in it. And this is a great spiritual training. Taraweeh. However, if someone, by the circumstances of their work, their life, they're not able to do all 20 rakahs in the masjid, it still remains an emphasized sunnah to do taraweeh. So catch what you can at the masjid and complete the rest at home, but do the 20 rakahs uh, because it is. Performing the 20 rakahs is an emphasized sunnah both for men and for women as well. So to, to keep that in mind. It's not only when you can make it to the masjid that it's sunnah, it's sunnah even at home. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate, and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.